forte piano entrances were terrible trombones, you have one job, you know it. It's late. It's almost always just a little bit late. It's Saturday morning on game day, and the University of Arizona marching band, known as the Pride of Arizona, is practicing for tonight's performance. Football season is here. Achieving the right sound requires precision. That was excellent musically. Thank you. There are high expectations for this group of musicians. Damn rep. Keep pushing. Let's go. So the goal is still the same, to be the best marching band in the country and do innovative things, creative things, um, high value entertainment things for the crowd. One of the things that I think helped me coming from Disney is appreciating the value of a quality performance, but also creating an experience for people that come to the campus. We want them to have a game day experience. And that experience is built from the ground up through excellent musicianship, personal performance, and emotional connection with the fans in the stands. One of the instruments most often associated with marching bands is the trumpet. And it does have a brassy type of sound. It's the predominant sound you hear when you're out listening to a band. You'll hear the trumpets all the time and uh, trumpets love to play out loud, so they like to be heard. Larry Paxson is a trumpet player and has played in bands since third grade. He also played for the U of A marching band while he was a student. I don't practice as much as I used to as in college. Of course, he played every day, so. My major was math with a minor in physics and systems engineering. It was kind of the precursor to what would be computer sciences. For Paxton, playing music was a welcome distraction from a rigorous academic life. I'm primarily a geek, and it was a kind of a way of getting out of my geekness to experience the other side of my brain as well. Also helped me be more disciplined. It was a good foundation for me, and I'm thankful that I've had the experience to have music in my life. He's now a member of the Pride of Arizona Alumni Band, comprised of former U of A band members a multi-generational group of musicians who love to play. They're here on campus, also practicing for tonight's game. One, two. Another member one, of the band, two, Ray Martinez. He was a music education major and plays the D-flat piccolo. It's a little shorter, a little sharper, brighter sound. You can just really hear that thing. <laughs> I love music, yeah. We're going to be playing music for the uh, tailgaters and then follow the pride into the, uh, into the stadium afterwards and then play some rah-rah music. Now known as the Pride of Arizona, back then they had a different nickname. Then it was known as the best band in the West under Jack Lee. Best in the West, that was our big, big saying, yes, best in the West. Larry Paxton and Ray Martinez are friends and have a lot in common. And we started marching, and that page just stayed there. <laughs> both are musicians, about the same age, and in 1967, both were sophomores when they found out they'd be playing in the first Super Bowl. Found out about it through our band director, Jack Lee, and he was considered one of the great innovators of marching bands. It was really kind of a surprise. We didn't really know that we were going to be playing in the Super Bowl. We enjoyed the University of Arizona football games, and we know what football was, but it's still hard to relate to what a professional football championship was all about, how important it really was. So there was a lot of pressure, but on the other hand, it's just, just another day at the park. They've done it a thousand times in rehearsals, and uh, you just got to go out there and do it right. On January 15, 1967, when the Green Bay Packers and the Kansas City Chiefs faced off in the AFL-NFL championship game, now known as the first Super Bowl. The game was played at the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum. At that time, considered one of the three top bands in the United States. We were the closest ones to Los Angeles, which is where it was held, and so it made kind of economic sense. We were in Greyhound buses, and so we didn't have a whole lot of room. We had our instruments and ourselves, and so he said, pick light, change of underwear, bring your toothbrush. When we got there, we practiced at a couple of different high school stadiums where we practiced a halftime show. We never knew quite what was going to happen, but we knew we were going to find some way to have a good time and play hard and do our best. One day at rehearsal, another band showed up. It was a Grambling band. They really just did the, the pregame show with us, and so we, really, we looked forward to meeting with the Grambling people. We admired them because they had a neat drum section, you know. 
Oh, God, was that unbelievable. I think I remember every moment. It's just walking into the Coliseum there. You walk through a tunnel, and then you go on to that field. The amount of people that were there was just amazing, you know, just amazing. And the excitement was there. I look back on it, it was a great time in, in my life, and it was a, certainly a big part of my growing up. I still have close bonds with many of those people from, from the years. The lifelong friendships are formed as a result of being in the band. It would have been true whether we went to the Super Bowl or not.